Okay, I want you to start by considering a piece of string. Now what we're going to do is move one end of the piece of string up and down with simple harmonic motion. As we do that, that's going to cause sinusoidal waves to propagate along a piece of string. And as we've seen, we can write down the equation for these waves as y is equal to a sine kx minus omega t. Now, at some point, these waves are going to get to the other end of our piece of string. Now, if that end's fixed, when they are reflected, they're going to undergo a phase change of 180 degrees or pi radians. So at that point, we're going to have waves which are perfectly out of phase. So at that point, the waves will completely cancel out. We're going to have destructive interference. So you know what happens at that point. But let's consider what happens along the rest of the piece of string. Once the wave is reflected, it's traveling in the opposite direction. So we've now got a wave which we can describe by the equation y is equal to a sine kx plus omega t. We don't need to worry too much about the phase difference for now. We know that the phase differences will cause the destructive interference at the point where the, at the end of the string. And so at that point, we're going to have zero amplitude. So now if we want to work out what's happening for the rest of the string, what we need to do is add together our two waves, in invoking the principle of superposition. So let's have a look at how we do that now. Okay, so we've got two waves in our piece of string. We've got y is equal to a sine kx minus omega t. And then we've got y is equal to a sine kx plus omega t. Let's call this one y1 and this one y2. And what we want to get is the superposition of these two waves. So we want y1 plus y2. So we're going to add together these two sine functions. And when we do that, we're going to need to make use of one of the trigonomic identities, which tells us that if we have sine a plus sine b, then that is equal to 2 sine a plus b on 2 cos a minus b on 2. So in this case, this a out the front the amplitude. It's not the same as the a in here. So the a in there, that is a, and this is b. So we can say a plus b on 2 is equal to kx minus omega t plus kx plus omega t on 2. So the omega t's cancel out and we end up with 2kx on 2, so that's kx. And the a minus b on 2 is equal to kx minus omega t minus kx. Now it'll be minus mi plus omega t, so that's minus omega t over 2. And that will be equal to minus 2 omega t on 2 which is minus omega t. But remember that cos of omega t is the same as cos of minus omega t, just because cos of anything, cos of theta, is the same as cos of negative theta. Okay, so now that we've worked out what a plus b on 2 and a minus b on 2 are, we can use this equation here along with these ones. So we've got 2a, so a is a common factor, out the front here and then we've got the sine of the a plus b so that's sine kx cos of omega t so this equation is the equation of a standing wave now what's special about it what makes it a standing wave as opposed to a tra traveling wave is that we can split it into two parts We've got a spatial part here, which describes how the wave moves through space and varies with space, with x, the distance x along the piece of string. And this part here is a temporal part, which tells us how the string moves with time. So basically, this part is giving us the amplitude at each point along the piece of string. So amplitude at each point. So at certain x's, 
say x equals zero, this sign function is always going to be zero. But at other places, it can range between one and minus one. So two times a times this thing is going to be some number between plus 2a and minus 2a and it'll tell us the amplitude dependent on x the distance along the piece of string and this cos omega t this is tells us what happens with time and you can see it varies between 1 and minus 1 and it actually varies with simple harmonic motion so this tells us that each point along the string moves up and down with simple harmonic motion Okay, what I have here is a standing wave, which is generated by a frequency generator here, which is just moving up and down with simple harmonic motion. You do need to know the names of some parts of a standing wave. These bits where the string is stationary are known as nodes. They're the places where the amplitude of the motion is zero. The places with the largest movement are known as the antinodes and they occur halfway between the nodes. At each piece of the string, the string itself is moving with simple harmonic motion and the amplitude of that motion is given by 2a sine kx. So that depends on how far from the end of the string the piece of string that we're considering is.